This video is about the fervent dimension of music. Um, I've, uh, and this one I really associate with, um, uh, modernity, but specifically like, um, with the invention of electricity and amplification and, um, the, the culture industry, mass media, um, and, you know, all, all of that, that, um, this, this cleft is formed, uh, is that a word, a cleft? Yeah. Uh, between high art and mass art, um, uh, mass culture, and, um, uh, fervent is not one or the other of those. It's, um, it's a tendency within both. So, um, so in, uh, you know, so-called serious music, I feel like that, that's a term people used to use seriously and it's kind of harder to, but in, in the continuation of the classical tradition into avant-garde territory um, you have first of all um, the increasing chromaticism that I described in a previous video uh, really really sort of break uh, that you know that tendency reaches its zenith or breaking point in the work of Wagner and then with uh, Schoenberg uh, atonal music is invented where the um, the twelve equal temperament tones of the scale uh, or of the Western tuning system that was first uh, really demonstrated iconically by Bach, uh, as I also mentioned in a previous video, um, that that um, is really brought into this kind of sort of horrifying territory where um, um, anyway there's atonal music and then serial music and um, uh, and then uh, and then after that you know then there's sort of the Stockhausen era of avant-garde classical music where um, then you know even the the use of the 12 tones breaks down and uh, the the whole tradition, the uh, all the all the the skill sets and the notation style of classical music continues, but the music is now microtonal, and people are you know like taking mathematical formulas and just kind of plugging them into their compositions, um, and uh, you know even 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 melody is critiqued and um, uh, in certain circles, this is a well known development in classical music. And on this side of things, um, the, the kind of important point is that you know, part of that is actually continuing the march of reason uh, as, um, uh, as sort of initiated by classical music. Um, and, you know, s someone like Boulez really represents that, or, you know, e Elliot Carter, um, where, I mean, even Sch Schoenberg, I think, sort of claimed to represent this, um, but he was sort of at odds with himself, where, like, that, you know, the idea is that uh, we are transcending convention um, and that, uh, th that maybe, maybe tonality itself is um, conventional, and that uh, these sort of new horizons um, uh, in music are, uh, you know, somehow that that's kind of progress, that there's a kind of problem being solved, that there's a sort of, there's this utopian vision to it. Um, but, you know, if, if in some cases that's what if, in some cases that's what's happening um, but there's another thing happening there, too, 
and in some figures it's more obvious and more straightforward and others not i think schoenberg's great because he really embodies both um uh, and the other one being this um this sort of horror i guess at the uh early stages of the dissolution of sort of what we know uh, what we know humanity to be, you know. I mean, so there's horror that's kind of actually a pathos that's expressed about, you know, the world wars and so forth. But but also um, this sense that like the 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 humanist intelligibility that we have known uh, is beginning to dissolve, and um, there is a kind of curiosity about like you know, what it is to perceive music as music, you know, what, what, what are the limits of what counts as music and what doesn't, you know, like not, n not all art asks that question. You know, so sacred art does not ask that question at all. Classical art does not either. Like originality takes place in those realms, but it's only in um, this, this other realm where like, you're you're trying to break boundaries you're, you're trying to kind of you know have people be like this is an art and you're like yes it is you know you'll, you'll see or yes it is because it's sort of um emanating emanating from a place within me that um you know i'm not really sure where it's headed you know maybe it's destructive maybe it's creative i, I don't really know but like I sort of have have a certain kind of grim grim faith, um, and so there's that tendency in classical music, um, and uh, and I would say in some ways, like the like the New York School and uh, you know Cage and Feldman, um, would count as being on that side of the equation more than on the modernist side. Um, and then, but then you have uh, what was a, a much more significant global phenomenon, uh, the, you know, the birth of rock music and metal. And I think that this is sort of, um, you know, people, people have a hard time figuring out how to fit rock music and classical music into the same narrative um it, it's really amazing like as far as i know it really has not been done well ever e even now um but um so you know rock music is, is a lot of things but one thing that it is is that it's you know it's using um it's aestheticizing the whole sort of you know the the power grid you know uh you know you know plugging in uh you know turning up amps louder than they're supposed to go uh you know so have, having new forms emerge from that you know the distorted guitar you know the the scream into the microphone um and uh and then just the you know the phenomenon of sort of you know pressing uh pressing albums and and uh, you know ma mass producing them and uh uh, you know these big concerts, Woodstock. You know all, you know all this stuff. Like this, this is a similar kind of like. Um, in, in in a way, there is a tendency in that that is this similar kind of surging forth of something that is kind of beyond the human, um, or uh, just just beyond beyond convention. That's like. A little bit satanic, a little bit in, uh, offensive, scary, um, and so forth. And um, um, there, there's more to it, uh, but um, and yeah, so that's yeah, that's that's a tendency that you know it's you you might want to identify it with one of those two things, um, and. People don't usually have expertise in both, but uh, but you know the what the unifying principle is the the change of the of the industrial mode, 
and then it's really just kind of you know depending on you know education and class or whatever or just kind of you know, you know context that music will either kind of be funneled into you know serious music or vernacular music but the, the tendency is still there um and uh and uh you know it's just i've I already kind of said this but just to underscore it like it entails a rejection of um classical music and 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 and, and, associ- and sacred music you know that that like those things are kind of something um that that they are oppressive that they're a false god or something like that and that there's this sort of other some kind of deity that's uh you know like the god the god of fluxus you know you know I, like the um i'm spacing on who it is but like you know fluxus kind of worshipped this like like aztec god I, you know it's like a this sort of Taoist sort of flickering type of thing um yeah there's uh fervent music and uh and that you know and this is the context where the burst beat comes in so i i made a video recently about the burst beat and the burst beat is really drawing specifically on on this energy in music sacred tremolo sorry special tremolo and general tremolo draw more on the rationalist uh um catharsis so uh 